Hey everyone, my name is Anne Marie and welcome to the Hello Basque YouTube channel. If you're new here, I am based out of California and my father is from the Basque country, so hence the Hello Basque YouTube channel where every week I'm talking about different things having to do with the Basque country because I'm a big fan and I love sharing information. So today's video is part of a series of videos about the different Basque provinces that the Basque country has. Now historically there are seven Basque provinces, I've already covered three and today we're going south of the border now if you will, the French-Spanish border. Um, North of the border, we call that part of the Basque country Iparralde. South of the French-Spanish border, we call that Egoalde, the southern Basque country. Um, so today's province I want to talk to you about is Gipuzkoa. This is like the heavy hitter of the Basque provinces in my personal opinion um, because Gipuzkoa has a lot to offer people and it's one of the provinces that maybe is like better known outside of the Basque country um, because it has the city of San Sebastián also in Basque known as Donostia. So San Sebastián is famous now worldwide for having an amazing food scene. Their old town has a bunch of bars that are like super close together and they serve something called pinchos, P-I-N-T-X-O-S, um, that's how you say that word. And a lot of times people compare pinchos to tapas. I'll tell you right now, it's not quite the same thing but basically pinchos are a small plate like a small bite of food um, pincho is literally like a stick or a skewer so pretty much these foods have usually like a toothpick in them to kind of hold the foods together so oftentimes it's like a base of bread and then different things piled onto it with um, a skewer holding it all together um, and so I say they're different from tapas because the way it's been explained to me is uh, that tapas are small plates that are meant to be shared with others as kind of like a meal, whereas pinchos are literally like a bar snack. They're individual servings. Oftentimes you'll get like a drink and a pincho and like you personally will just eat that. Um, but so Gipuzkoa has a lot of pinchos. They're not the only part of the Basque country that has that, but I just wanna throw it out there that um, a lot of people who go to San Sebastian they go just to try this type of food. It's kind of like a newer Basque cuisine in the last few decades um, and has been really popular internationally. Uh, here in the US, Anthony Bourdain, RIP, he made the Basque country kind of famous on the American circuit because he did uh, quite a few specials on TV visiting San Sebastian and exploring the food there and other parts of the Basque country and meeting with world class. Basque chefs and um, so San Sebastián Donostia is like the heart of Gipuzkoa. It's got amazing beaches. Okay, I admit to you the first few times I went like I didn't understand the charm because every time I went was in the off season and it was always raining and I was like okay cool it's just like a really rainy city um, and Gipuzkoa like much of the Basque country is quite a rainy place very beautiful green hillsides um, but a few years ago I went because I was determined to love it I was like I'm gonna give this place a chance and I went for two weeks and I stayed just in Donostia and kind of took little side trips out of the city and I will tell you it is a very charming place um, but that's not all Gipuzkoa has to offer Gipuzkoa also has some beautiful towns um, and the cool thing in terms of Basque culture is that Kipuzkoa has the highest number of Basque speakers, people who speak Euskera, the Basque language, which is totally separate from French or Spanish. I've done quite a few videos on it. You can maybe check that out after this one. But Kipuzkoa, like very proud, very Basque because they have um, kind of the center, they're like the heart of uh, the Basque language of the Basque country and they're kind of like the most central province anyway. Um, so from what I've read when they were creating kind of a standardized Basque language trying to gather all the different dialects and figure out like what's the most common language we can come from all of these. Standardized Basque drew heavily on the Kipuzkoan dialect because it's kind of right in the middle of everything and in theory easier for people in other parts of the Basque country to understand. So Gipuzkoa, a place to be proud of. In terms of Basqueness too, Gipuzkoa like feels very Basque. I mean, because it's within Euskadi, 
the Basque autonomous community within Spain, um, where Basque language is recognized officially. It, Gipuzkoa feels very Basque. Um, there's a lot of Basque flags, especially in Donostia, San Sebastián. There's signs written in Basque as well as Spanish, um, but it's pretty cool to see like a very visible Basque presence. Uh, Gipuzkoa also has some famous people that came from it. Some more internationally famous people who came from Gipuzkoa, like number one is the fashion designer, Cristobal Balenciaga is from Gipuzkoa. Maybe not a lot of people know that Balenciaga is Basque, but like I didn't know that until someone told me and then I like listened to the name again. I was like, oh yeah, that is like such a Basque name. Why did I just assume it was Italian all these years? Because high fashion and never in a million years thought would be associated with the Basque country, but Balenciaga is from Gipuzkoa and another hometown hero that they're super proud of in Guitaria, literally same town that uh, Balenciaga is from. They got a guy called uh, Elcano who officially was the first man on record to have circumnavigated the globe. He was part of Magellan's expedition, but People may not know, Magellan didn't make it to the end. He got killed in the Philippines before they could make it to the end and that put Elcano in charge. So he's the guy who actually kind of finished the journey. And so Basque of Yipusco are like super proud of this. There's statues for him, streets named after him. If we're talking about how Basque Yipusco is when I spent these two weeks over there, like I was shocked and like so honored that just walking around the city three times in my two weeks, three times. Dudes came up to me on the street speaking Basque. Like they just came at me and they just said some things to me in Basque. And I was so excited because I was like, oh my God, mama, I made it. They think I'm Basque. Do I look Basque to you? Oh, it was like a little Basque American dream come true. And then quickly followed by like, sorry, I, I don't actually speak Basque. And it always left people very confused because I would say to them in Basque, like, as nice as Shkualduna, Americano nice, which means I'm not a Basque speaker, I'm American, and like just seeing their, their just their freaking faces, like their minds were blown, they didn't know what to make of me, and I really enjoyed that experience. Um, one day I think I would enjoy even better being able to actually respond to them, or even understand what they were trying to ask me, these dudes talking to me on the street. I don't know, but uh, one day I hope to be part of that secret club and when that day happens, I will be in Gipuzkoa so I can join in on the fun. Gipuzkoa as a tourist also is like pretty easy to get around because like I said, it's within Euskadi, which has a beautiful infrastructural network, if I do say so myself. As an American, I love going over there because they got buses and trains and they work, um, <laughs> which I can't say for my own country is always the case, but um, Gipuzkoa, it's pretty well connected to other provinces of the Basque country. It always helps to have a car if you're planning on visiting there and you want to get out of the major cities, um, but you really don't need one, which is always nice, especially if you're traveling on a budget. So I highly encourage you to check out Gipuzkoa if you have not been. Uh, it's kind of like like the place that people have to go. Like when people ask me, they're going to the Basque country for the first time, like where should they go? Of course my heart is in Iparralde, which is where my dad is from, the Northern Basque country, the French side. But um, in terms of like tourist things to do, in terms of like nightlife and ambiance and just, I mean, Donostia, San Sebastian, it has everything. That's always on the top of my list. Now that I've visited and I know that it's actually beautiful and a really cool place. <laughs> Sorry for the initial hesitation, but um, I'm from California, so I'm used to sunshine. And uh, yeah, the rain didn't do it for me, but I appreciate its value. I don't know what that means. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I have linked in the description the other videos in this series if you want to go check out and learn about some other Basque provinces. And uh, if you're from Gipuzkoa, like, let us know in the comments what you want to add to this discussion and tell us why your spot is the best part of the Basque country, I guess. If you have not already, please subscribe to the Hella Basque YouTube channel so you can catch all the videos that we're posting every week. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.
and a really beautiful place. Like all parts of the Basque Country, it's all beautiful. Uh. <laughs> oh, what else? Gibuskwa!